sex trafficking. When was the first time you heard that term? The first time that I had uh, any exposure with sex trafficking was in 2013. Uh, I was the supervisor of the major crimes unit in Cumberland County and uh, we had noticed a, a large increase in uh, the crimes around our hotels, around our local hotels, uh, in interviewing the suspects and interviewing the victims and interviewing all the people related to it. Uh, we learned about a website called Backpage.com. Uh, we learned about, uh, at that time, human trafficking. It was a, a new term to us in 2013, uh, but we uh, uh, researched what we needed to research um, and really delved into the topic okay, so that so we could... Talk about the, the sure. website, because sure. obviously that infrastructure creates a lot of opportunities. So mm -hmm. what did you find on this website? So... Um, Backpage.com, which has now been shut down by Congress, it has moved to other sites. Uh, but Backpage.com at that time uh, was a website um, very similar to Craigslist um, that was nationwide. In fact, it was worldwide. However, the vast majority of ads on Craigslist, the, the vast majority were devoted to uh, prostitution, uh, devoted to body rubs or massage. Um, including a dominatrix, that kind of thing. But it was almost all prostitution. They did have other services uh, as well. You could advertise your lawnmower, but the vast majority of Backpage was for uh, prostitution-related activity. Okay, so that was one source of delving into the depth of the problem. Other places you looked? Uh, yes, ma'am. So. We also um, went to the street level um, and uh, did operations to combat it. We used um, undercover operations uh, to, to go after it as well. So give us a sense of when you stood back after this kind of investigation, what, what were you seeing? How would you describe what you were seeing in Fayetteville? Sure. So... Um, one of the things is it's not just a Fayetteville problem. Although Fayetteville and Cumberland County lead the state in human trafficking related charges, um, this is absolutely a nationwide. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. It's absolutely a nationwide problem. Um, we have partnered with um, a, ta a task force. So the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office, the Fayetteville Police Department, our district attorney's office, the 12th Judicial. 12th Judicial District, as well as our non-government organization called Five Sparrows, has partnered together to combat this issue. That way we can go for a victim-centered approach, uh -huh. uh, which has just done light years for our investigation. Rather than just focusing on the trafficker, just focusing on the perpetrator of the crime, going and focusing on the victim first we have a much better success rate at getting that person out of the situation they were in, as w which will ultimately help us to prosecute the perpetrator of the crime. It strikes me that that's a slightly different perspective for law enforcement to be taking. So how did you get to the point where you recognized you needed to be victim-focused? By failing. By failing... Um, over and over again in our um, investigations those mm -hmm. uh, first year or so, uh, we would uh, see it, recognize it, charge it, but then when we would get to the criminal justice portion of it, when we would get to the actual prosecution of it, our victims were not healthy, our victims were not clean because they were so drug addicted, mostly heroin, mm -hmm. uh, but because they were so drug addicted, they could not see through that fog to make that clear choice that, that you and I can make. Um, because they had been so addicted, we had to, we, we knew we had to make a change in the way we were doing business. Wow. And that's when we partnered with um, our nonprofit organization, Five Sparrows. Well, as you rightly said, this is a national problem. It's yes, not just Fayetteville and Cumberland County. But Fayetteville and Cumberland County have distinguished themselves in their response. It's hard to know what progress looks like 
in this context. But talk a little bit about how you see things getting better. Um, through, uh, of course, our, our statistics stand for themselves. Um, I can't stress enough that our problem is no worse or, or no better than anyone else's. Uh, through our sheriff, uh, Sheriff Wright, and uh, through our community leaders, uh, they have decided that enough is enough and they're going after it. They have uh, dedicated um, units specifically for human trafficking uh, to go after it. That is why we have s such staggeringly high numbers as opposed to other jurisdictions, the even larger jurisdictions. Which is part of why it's hard to talk about progress in this way mm -hmm. because the more you look for it, the more you're likely to find it, yes, right? So your statistics are gonna be higher <laughs> just because you've said no more. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Worst case you've ever been involved in. Um, wow. Uh, two different uh, types. Wh one was a labor trafficking case um, where a whole bunch of people uh, were not able to leave and free to leave. Um, I don't want to get into the details of that. Uh, but the worst trafficker uh, that I have ever encountered uh, was actually a woman. I mean, she would burn people with cigarettes. Um, she is um, the, the worst person that, not just trafficker, she is the worst person that I have ever met, and she was recently uh, convicted. It's good to think that that person is off the streets. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. What do you see coming up in terms of future um, innovations in the way law enforcement is able to detect trafficking? Uh, we need to, as law enforcement, we need to continue to grow with the technology that is out there. Uh, we need to continue to educate the parents, educate the community, uh, so that when a new application, when a new website, when a new, any kind of technology comes out there, that we can inform the public, inform that parent um, what the new step is that they need to take uh, take to in, in ensure that the safety of their child, to ensure the safety of their community. That parent needs to know that they have the authority uh, to take charge of their child, to take charge of, of their cell phone, for instance, their whatever device that they have. They need to make sure, that, that parent needs to make sure that they have complete and total control of that child. So I want you to say a little bit more about prevention. We've been talking a lot about mm -hmm. what happens when you find a case, but obviously the sweet spot is when you prevent a case from happening. Talk a little bit about, a little bit more about the kind of prevention yes, um, activities you're engaged in. Oh yes ma'am, ounce of prevention. So we uh, through Five Sparrows, uh, the Sheriff's Office, and the Police Department, and uh, now the uh, Prosecutor's Office as well, we do community events uh, where we educate the public, just as I've been saying. Um, during those, we discuss things uh, just like cell phone uh, prevention, cell phone awareness. Um, I had a case very recently where they uh, used a Whisper app. Whisper is an app that does not you, you see me looking at you, that's like, a, what is a whisper app? Exactly, exactly. Until I had this case last week, I did not know what whisper was either. Whisper is an app that you don't, unlike Facebook, where you have to sign in with a username and an email and a phone number and provide personal data. Whisper, you download it from your iTunes account or you download it from your, your Play Store, and it automatically fills in a uh, character for you. Um, you don't have to provide any information other than your location, wow. uh, which is very troubling wow. for us. Um, and we had a case from that literally last week. So you're trying to stay up with the technology. You're also trying to help parents stay up with the technology. Yes, I already feel overwhelmed <laughs> by the technology, so kudos to you for that. Yes, 
haven't I asked you about human trafficking generally, sex trafficking in particular, that you really want viewers to hear? So um, this is not a victimless crime. Uh, very often someone, uh, someone will say to me, well, um, they're just prostitutes, though those people want to do it. Well, this is not a victimless crime. Um, I have investigated hundreds of these cases. I have interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people. And although they may have an ad that says, I love my job, every single person that I have spoken to about this issue, every single one, not not one single person has said, I like my clients. Not one single person has said, I like what I do, mm. when you actually speak to them about it. They loathe their clients. This is not a victimless crime. Thank you for what you do, for keeping our community safe. Um, we thank you. Thank you, ma'am.